Right, we are live. Good evening. Welcome along. Thank you to Mark Ray for being ever patient and coming up and being the first message on there today. That way, to that way. Not over there. Uh, first message today saying we're late. We're not late. We were chatting, weren't we, Chris? Yeah, we're too busy chatting about running. You know what it's like. Two middle-aged runners get together. You talk about running and you just go off on a tangent. It's brilliant. Right. Good evening, Andy. Thank you for joining as well. Uh, I'm Tony James. Welcome to my channel. Really do appreciate you taking the time to be with us tonight. Uh, got a good running buddy of mine. I keep pointing that way to you when you're no, I'm the other way. over there. Yeah. But I can't do it because that's the broken arm. Yeah. Oh, I can't I'll really do it. So if I point that way, you know I'm talking about you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, hey, your mate Ben's here as well. I know. He, he's chucking a bit of abuse. I probably will. No problem at all. Chris, introduce yourself, mate. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm Chris, as you know, 46, club runner, um, <coughs> YouTuber as well. Started running when I was 10, gave up when I was 17, was a competitive runner, uh, biggest achievement, Southern Counties cross-country cross champion. God, that is a mouthful, bit of a tongue twister. Uh, started again at 43, injured for two years on and off. Um, finally sorted myself out, watched the likes of Ben Parks and uh, Kafuzi. Started my own uh, YouTube channel in May. Um, was blown away by how quickly it grew. Um, and now all I do is just share tips on how I stayed injury free and, and how to train as a master's runner. Well, so I, think I, should, I think I should have come across you earlier and then I could have found out how to be injury free this year. Cause that was one of my goals. I set myself to be injury free for the whole of 2021. And yeah. But, go and break, break my arm on the first day. Yeah. But it don't count when you're running along holding a GoPro in front of your face and the kid runs out front of you. This is true. This is true. So, it happened yesterday. The yearly reject emails came out. Did you get in to London? I didn't, know, but Ben did it's in the comments there. Oh, Ben, um, ben in the comments, all right. To, to ben, I, I, I got the uh, email probably about lunchtime before I was going out for a run, uh, clicked on it, and it was uh, link was down, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> so I, can do it. So I, I, I basically come back home, um, refreshed it after the run, and unfortunately didn't get in so i was a bit disappointed and even more so that ben got in and i didn't is, is ben a good runner i'm sure you'll tell us in the comments below but uh from your knowledge of the guy is he one of the uh, top elite runners I, um i uh what do i do what do i do to say i'd rather not comment <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you'll i'm sure you'll tell us uh, good evening to michael as well for joining us tonight really do appreciate you being hey, here yeah, michael so um I went out to the post office earlier, very cold here in Blackpool. I think it was minus three when I went out. But I don't know if you know the geography of the country, but we're about 20 miles up the coast from Liverpool, about 50 miles from Manchester. But we live in this bubble on the file coast where we don't get it. We get a lot of wind when we're running on the prop. We get a lot of wind and a lot of rain, but we never get snow. So everyone's been hit by this beast from the east too, or whatever you're calling it. And we've had, I think we had a full flurry for about 90 seconds earlier on. What's yeah, it like with you? That's what we did. Well, we had probably about an hour or so. Um, I went out on the dog walk and we had snow. By the time I come back an hour later, it was all gone. Fair enough. Have you done much snow running? Because uh, I know the only time I've run in snow, it was in a car park in Canada when I was trying to uh, get, get to uh, get to the cafe before it closed. But that, that's the only time I've run in snow, and that was wearing normal trainers. What about yourself? Um, when last time it snowed, I thought to myself, you know, ideal opportunity for a video. You know, I watched Kafuzi's video of him running the snow, so I, I jumped up to my local park, uh, Botley Mansions, grabbed my uh, my uh, new trainers that I got for trail running, Wild Horse Sixes, and just had a little run around the snow. They were perfect. Fantastic. It's hard so, work, to be honest. Well, yeah, because your feet are sinking a lot further into the snow, uh, and it's like running in uh, thick mud, isn't it? Like running in a treacle. You're going further down, so you're actually putting more yeah. effort into picking your foot up and moving forward. But the GoPro loved it. The, the GoPro footage, I think GoPro is designed for snow. Well, um, tall, the Tim, Tim the Tall Runner, or whatever he's called, he's got a channel in America. He says that we should be calling our channels One Man and a GoPro. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, have you suffered with any of the battery problems that Kafuzi was on about? Uh, if you've not seen Kafuzi, go to his channel. It's fantastic. Lots of shoe reviews, lots of chat on, on running in general. But the Chicago skyline... The Great Lakes and the snow. It just looks absolutely awesome. It looks beautiful. Yeah. To be honest, I think most like my using my iPhone 8 um yesterday. 
was on about 30 percent and because the wind chill was minus six it went from 20 percent to zero in about two minutes and then i plugged it back in the uh, charger and it was at 30 percent so batteries in general if, if you, with your gopro if you want to protect it get yourself a, a little cover for it which is a, a wind slayer yeah, and that one. It keeps it warm it's got a little little coat on it <laughs> fantastic <laughs> Right, so the one thing about running in snow, if, if you don't want to go out there, um, if it's too too cold, too icy, that type of thing, is running on the treadmill. Did you see that story? Uh, you should have, actually, because I sent it to you. Uh, the world record for the longest, was it 100 kilometres on a treadmill? Yeah, I, I imagine he was trying to replicate, was it the the guy that kind of, um, what was the name of the guy that did it on the road? Jim, Jim Wormsley missed it by 11 seconds because he ran into the gate. Yeah, so, um, yeah, how can you run on a treadmill for that amount of time? It's just well, well I, one, how, how does the treadmill keep going for that amount of time? The amount of times mine used to cut out because uh, I had it plugged into the wrong socket. Well, there you go, it's dodgy electrics in your house, mate. You need to get somebody in. Ben will, ben will know somebody you can do your electrics with. Um, <laughs> the most I've done on a treadmill, and I'll admit this to you, is three hours. Yeah, um, I did stop every hour and, and take a little two minute break, but three hours I think it was 18 miles in total. I did it over the three hours, and apart from having um sailor's legs you know when you get off the treadmill you're, you're wandering yeah. all over the place the other thing that i really noticed about it was the electrical smell in the house you know from the belt going round yeah well, it absolutely well, stunk the house out and what about your electrical bill i don't pay that so i don't know how much it was yeah well, well, well i think a treadmill runs off at 240 volts so that's yeah. why it has to be plugged into a a, a direct socket rather than a feed, a feed off socket so i had a lot of problems with mine that used to cut out until i worked out that that was the problem but so, so what is the difference between running on the road and the treadmill pace wise I was, i've always been curious i read somewhere it's like 20 seconds per mile slower if you was to run on the road than the treadmill i don't know how accurate that is well the rule of thumb and i, I don't know if this is a, an urban myth but they're saying if you want to replicate road running on a treadmill you have to have it a, a one or a two percent incline because yeah. that's <clears throat> That replicates the amount of effort you're putting into your legs to run. Um, the thing with me, I can only go on a treadmill if I've actually got a, a big fan next to it. So I've got the air blowing across me because it's you just get too hot and yeah. I need airflow. So it's not air resistance. It's just airflow going across the skin and, and drying me off from, from the sweat. Uh, but apparently if you do put it on an incline, it does replicate road running. But obviously it's a lot softer because you land softer. The, the ground's moving away from you. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Did you used to watch telly though when you was on it? Yes, got to. Um, what I used to do was actually put the iPad in front of me and then watch some running videos. You know, um, things like Western States in in America yeah. and watch those those documentaries. So that was, and the other one was a good one on a Sunday afternoon when we used to be able to do this before it moved to Sky. Would watch a Grand Prix. Yeah, I, I've done that before. Is it? Yeah, if you watch a whole Grand Prix. Yeah, Grand Prix. I only like watching the start and the end. That's about it. Yeah, it is a bit processional now, isn't it? Yeah, you, you want to see, a, you want to maybe see a crash at the start, and then you want to see, a <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> maybe you're, that's a you're a rubbernecker, that's what you are. Um, ben says nice caps, by the way. Is, is this because he's not got one? Is he a bit jealous? Not, no, he, 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 no he, he's, he's got one. He, he, he bought one off me. Fantastic. Uh, I think that's why he's jealous. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mark Gray says that was insane. Six hours on a treadmill. It was the pace the guy was running as well. What was it? Six minutes, 13 seconds a mile on yeah, average? Yeah, 6.10, I think it was. That's uh, absolutely. That's, 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 that's about my 5K time. I think, got, uh, Jim Worsley ran it at 5.50 pace, didn't he? So it's, it's yeah. 20 seconds a mile difference, which is insane when you kind of think about that. But, but then when you compare that to the elite runners, like Jim Worsley running the American Trials, and he didn't come anywhere, did he, on the uh, in the marathon? Well, well, that's it. I've watched uh, quite a few videos on Jim Wormsley recently. They all seem to end in failure. I'm not having a dig at the guy because he's brilliant and he knows what, he knows what he's doing and he is a good competitor and he's got uh, records and all sorts of course records. But most of his, he's one of those guys that he gets knocked down and he picks himself up again and then goes for it again. Because if you watch the first time he entered the Western States, he was over an hour ahead yeah. at 92 miles, was it, or something? And then just totally took a wrong turn and ended 20th. <laughs> <laughs> if you go watch the documentary, he was at 92 miles of a 100 mile race. He was an hour ahead of the guy in second place. Somehow missed the turn he was supposed to take and carried on and ended up on a highway. 
you know, some people were saying this guy's just wandering around, phone calls to the marshal saying this guy wandering around on the highway. So by the time he made his way back to the actual course and started running again, it was absolutely shot because he'd been running at seven minute miles or something. He just doesn't have much luck, does he? Uh, no, and he, he was totally shot and he walked in the last few miles and came in 20th in the end, but next year he went and won it. Yeah, but ha like when he did the uh, the um, his last one, he was 11 seconds off the world record. How do you go away from that? You run for six hours and then you miss it by 11 seconds. You go away with a big smile on your face saying, I'm the second fastest person <laughs> to run that distance. <laughs> it's a hell of an achievement. Do not knock it. It's a hell of an achievement. No, but the thing is, he's going to look back and think, I cut my shoulder. That cost me the 11 that seconds. That was it. It, it happened just as the camera cut away as well, so he didn't see it. But you could see that the gate was just slightly open, yeah, and he yeah. just cut the corner too much and banged into it. Yeah, I, I, I think I've done that on an evening run once in the light. You know, they kind of um, – are they the telephone boxes, the green ones that are quite low by the path? Uh, the internet boxes, yeah. Yeah, one of, one of them is next to a path. I run into the corner of that. Well, yeah. we all run into a bollard at some point, haven't we? And then said sorry to it. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from Ben, because he's he's ace, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, have you ever thought of doing any of those uh, long ultras? And I, mean, I don't mean a, a marathon length ultra. I mean going the fifty miles, and maybe even trying to do the hundred miles in twenty four hours. No. As simple as that. I, I, I'm running with um, Ben and Dan when we're doing the Oddballs um, charity run, but I'm only going to do half, so I'm only going to do 16 miles mm -hmm. um, because I think sometimes you need to know your weaknesses, and mine's my Achilles, and I, I can't risk you know, doing 32 miles and then ruining my Achilles. It's not worth it. This is true. You've got to listen to your body, haven't you? Yeah. Um, well, I think we're our age. Yeah, does we stop it with the R age? Because we are middle aged. We're middle aged. We're not old. We are middle aged runners. Yes. And what's the term that's coming out of America these days that Ed Bud uses? Oh yeah, we're non elite. Yeah. Or, or should we be taking the Jameson Michael approach and just saying we're joggers? Yeah. Well, he's not really a jogger, is he? <laughs> no, I was watching a video of his today. He was uh, doing some blistering times on a interval session around the track. Yeah. No, he's, he's got a really good style, actually. Hold on, what's Mark said? Mark has said here, I'm giving up running if it happens to me six hours and miss it by 11 seconds. Um, well, he didn't, he didn't deserve that. Oh, well, Ben's saying we're elderly runners. But, yeah, no, going back to Jamie, just it was an accident. These things happen, as we know. <clears throat> he'll come back, and I'm sure he'll, he'll get it shortly. Well, I suppose that, that the accident just comes down to fatigue at the end of the day, doesn't it? Well, especially on the master joggers. Yeah, I suppose master John, joggers. Cool. So what's, what did you say your marathon time is? I've never run a marathon. What do you estimate your marathon time to be? Uh, 2.50, 2.55. Fantastic. Uh, as a 53-year-old, I've run two full-on marathons, uh, London and Berlin, and then I've done three virtuals last year. So I've got my time down to three hours 47. But the first one I did, which was London in 2019, was four hours 54. And I was absolutely over the moon with yeah. that time. Well, one of my club mates actually run. Yeah, you know, there's one at Ben Parks. I think he ran a two hours, two hours late 20s or early 30s. And my club mate said he was at the end of the run. They were both coming up to the finish. And he had Ben Parks running next to him, chatting to the camera, and he was absolutely shot. And there's Ben Parks just going, "Oh yeah, I'm near the finish." Yeah. <laughs> he said it was so soul destroying <laughs> having someone, you know. Yeah. And, and you've just run a two thirty marathon. Well, somebody said that to me after the Central Lanks half marathon back in uh, January last year, because I took the GoPro when doing all that, and uh, I think I was around in one. 45 or something like that on the half marathon yeah how can you do that and be talking to the camera <laughs> it's natural isn't it you just get it out and start talking and running and then what you yeah. then what you do is you pick a random person next to you and start talking to them and interview them what are you doing yeah, you do <laughs> to be honest it actually to a degree it helps control your breathing yeah because you're getting down to that conversational, well, I don't breath, know about conversational. I, I, i've done it on a 5k time trial run with a camera in my hand yeah, how did you do with that? Uh, I think it was it was really really windy that day, and I think I ended up in. Oh, just stop it with the excuses. Just no, it was really windy. It was it was it was I think seventeen mile an hour winds. It was one of these ones that 
you know, well, you, you know. I'm just going to stop you there, and I'm just going to say this to Mark Gray, who is a mate of mine, is in the same club as I am. Um, Chris has just said 17 miles an hour winds. Mark, can you please tell him what type of winds we regularly run in on the promenade in Blackpool? I'll let him type in there what that, what the answer to that will be. But, what behind you? No, into it. <laughs> <laughs> it swings and roundabouts, doesn't it? You know, you have it against you, come back. Yeah. Um, I think I've done a 10K with, um, I think it was minus one, and I run a 10K in 39, 19 or so while holding a GoPro. Fantastic. It's, it's, that, that was fun. <laughs> um, that, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm at 41 minutes something at the moment, so I'm looking to get down to uh, sub, sub 40. Uh, yeah. 5k time for me is 19.54 so I've got that sub 20 on the 5k so I'm quite happy with that so I just need to work on it once I get back up and running see so we can drop it again well it's all to do with um, building that aerobic base at the end of the day it is you know getting doing those long slow runs because you're the same mindset as I am the, yeah. get those slow runs in at a slower pace and then the um, the actual faster pace comes when you need it just by doing yeah, the 80-20 method isn't it yeah, because a lot of people don't understand that uh, 5K is an aerobic event, so it's 90% aerobic. So you need to be training uh, in your aerobic zone. So 80% of your runs should be training in your aerobic zone. Mm -hmm. And I prove that to myself by knocking two minutes off my 5K time by doing that. Well, I noticed um, last year when I came back from uh, my knee injury, I I'd purposely slowed down. Yeah. And looking at Not looking at the pace on my watch, but just looking at the heart rate, trying to keep the heart rate down and noticed that I was getting quicker and quicker and the heart rate wasn't changing. The heart rate was yeah. staying where it was, but my actual running was getting faster. Yeah, it's because it, you're getting consistency, you're increasing your mileage, you can recover quicker, you're not going to injure yourself. It just makes sense, you know, run slow to run fast. I, I know some people were like, this sounds stupid, but it works. To be honest, that was me. I, I, I really did laugh and scoff at that when I first heard about yeah. it. But sat on the plane on the way to Berlin for the marathon. Uh, it was a plane out of Liverpool and it was just full of people with trainers. Don't know what was going on, but it was just full of runners. And the guy sat next to me was a guy from Wales, an English teacher. I can't remember his name. But he, he really started to go on that the best way to run faster is to run slower. And he really went into it. And it's from that moment on that plane, that's yeah. when my mindset clicked and changed. Yeah, mine was just constantly getting injured. You know, two years of going out, like we all do, you know, you think we've got to run fast, you know, we've got to come back, we've got to beat our PB, obviously, we, you know, we're demo demotivated. And you do it time and time again, and people are saying to you, slow down, slow down, and it's like in one ear, out the other. Mm -hmm. And then you come back from your injury and you do the same again and the same again until you actually think, hang on a minute, let's give it a go. And then it works. Didn't Freud say that stupidity, just going out and repeating the same mistake every time? It is, but you know, it's after a while, it it, it sinks in, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, you have you know, that light bulb moment. Well, you just need to get back to enjoyment. You know, we all started running because we enjoy it. You you end up becoming a slave to the watch. Mm -hmm. So just, just get out, slow your pace down, enjoy it, and then you can up your mileage safely. I went from thirty mile weeks to fifty mile weeks within the space of a short period of time. I know it's it shouldn't be done, but mm -hmm. all because I was, you know, low intensity stuff. Cool. It's good. So just having a look at a few of the comments while we've got there. Uh, Marcus said, oh, my God, 70 miles per hour wins. Uh, I don't think it was quite that bad. Um, when we did a half marathon in February last year, it was 38 miles an hour gusting to about 48. So that was quite interesting on the promenade. Yeah. Um, what do you mean, yeah? <laughs> well, well, you, well, you shouldn't go for a run if it's that windy. Or you should have the wind behind you and go for a mile PB. Well, no, the thing the thing is on the problem, as you said, as you quite rightly say, well, no, I'm going to I'm going to change what I was going to say. I was going to say that, yes, it blows one way and then it's behind you on the way back. But you also get that anomaly and especially a place called Fleetwood up the road from us where they, they've got a really fast park run course on the promenade. It could be one of those that whichever way you're running, you've got the wind against you. Well, it's always the way I've, the amount of runs I've been out on and gone out with a wind in my face, turn around and thinking, hang on a minute, I'm going to have it behind me on the way back and then it's in my face again. How does that work? Yeah. I have no idea. That's that's been in the UK that does that. Uh, Mark yeah. says he's watched some videos today. I presume he means watched some of yours. Uh, very interested to learn to run fast is to run slow. Yep, that's the way forward. Uh, Andy Hall also commenting last half marathon. Oh, I've forgotten I can do this, can't I? Because I'm on this stream. Yeah, I can actually do that. Up, yeah. yeah, last half marathon I did. 
knocks five minutes off my best, keeping the training low intensity, and it works. So yeah, it's it's it does it does indeed work. And yeah, it's one of those things we don't know why. You know, it, it, ideally eighty twenty because you want to throw in a bit of speed work. But at this time of year, just keep it hundred percent easy runs. And if you want a bit of speed, just chuck in some um, strides. Yeah, some strides at the end just to uh, warm down with them. St. Anne's 10 miler was 70 miles an hour. There you go. <laughs> it's beautiful in the summer, but it's windy. Yeah, a little bit dangerous. <laughs> oh, the thing about Mark, and I, he, won't, he won't mind me saying this, he's Scottish, so this is just a wee breeze to him, so he, he can probably handle it. Does he probably go out in his shorts and vests in the, you know, when it's, it's kind of winter? No, he doesn't. He's very togged up, actually, is our Mark. He takes it ser he takes it seriously and he looks after himself, which is good. Right, so let's move it on a bit. Let's have a talk about shoes. What's your favourite shoe at the moment? Uh, Tempo Next Percent. Tempo uh, Next Percent. This shoe, I've worn this shoe three times. Yep. Right. Uh, first time I wore it, I went out on a 10K. So I went out on a 10K for, I do a little tempo run, first couple of miles for, hmm, going all right here. So I pushed on the pace, end up running um, a PB in them on a tempo run. Fantastic. So, Have I, you added so I, I think it was, because uh, I haven't never raced a, a 10K lately. So I run, uh, I think it was a 39.06 or something stupid like that. And so then uh, I thought to myself, I did a 50 mile week. And at the end of the 50 mile week, I had 13 miles to go. So I thought, oh, I'll take these shoes out again and I'll do a tempo run. End up smashing my half marathon PB on a tempo run because I know it was a tempo run because my heart rate was at 155. Uh, run a 127. Fantastic. And, and, then, the, and then last week, I uh, did a 5k at the end of the 50 mile week and run a 1829. Brilliant. So they're doing the job for you. These shoes are amazing. Um, if I was to give you a comparison, these are the Zoom Fly SPs. Yep. And I wore these on a 5K, and my average stride length was 1 meter 44. These, my average stride length was 1 meter 65. Wow. So that's, that's gone up a bit, hasn't it? Meters. From the pop of the, po the air pocket. The, the, the thing is that they, they help improve your form because you want to be hitting that, you know, you want to be hitting this sort of area. Um, yeah. Ben Parks has actually gone through two of these, but I think the problem with Ben Parks is that he just lands on his toes. Yep. So all his pressure is constantly here, where I'm more of a kind of midfoot, so I'm kind of here to here. So, so I imagine that these airbags can't take that constant, you know, just landing on that particular spot. So I imagine, I bought, yeah. I was going to say, if I buy a pair of those, the, the airbags will be hardly used because I'm a really serious heel striker. So uh, I, I think uh, the Hoka Cliff... Uh, Carbon X2 are probably the yeah. ones I'm looking at because they're good I, for heel strikers. Correct the heel striking by shortening the stripe pan. Well, this is all the things I've been looking at while I've been sat at home doing nothing. So once I get back out and running, then the technique side I'm going to look at more than I have previously. Because again, previously it's just been going out running and training, but but now I'm going to have to look at the, looking at the technique. And I've just done a course with the running school to yeah. actually learn the, the proper leg cycle and the arm swing. So I'm going yeah. to be looking at teaching myself that first. And then yeah. taking it forward. Well, basically, just over striding. Yeah, you can see the foot's going out too far. I just need to be bringing it back, getting it under that centre of the mass. It's and just hard to explain, yeah, because when you get to the centre, you're almost pushing down and then yep. swapping back. You need to be conscious of that. And there are certain shoes, like my Pegasus 37s, with the 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 uh, um, air unit in. So they got the air unit in here that encourage you, you know, encourage you to land here because yep. anywhere from here back, this shoe is horrendous. So hill strikers don't buy the Pegasus 37. Fantastic. Right, just have a look at a few of the questions that have come up while we've been chatting about that. Um, Michael's asked, uh, do you both uh, have you run any cross country races? I will start that and say the last cross country race I ran in was when I was 15 and I came 19th in Blackpool Wild and Fire. Yeah, I can't even say it. Blackpool Wild and Wire and our school team came third overall. So that was the last time I did a cross country race. But uh, doing trail running is on the cards for something to be doing in the future. Uh, I've done a few cross countries. Um, when I was a teenager, it was my forte. Um, as I mentioned before, I was a Southern Counties cross country champion. Um, when I was about 13, 14, 
um, and used to run a lot of cross countries in the um, for my county. Um, and recently, I've run for my club, uh, Woking AC. Well, I don't say recently; it's probably over a year ago. Well, we've not run any races, have we? Recently, no. But I, I just love the cross countries. What well, we know, what's not to love? Well, I'm pretty close to Lake District, so uh, as I say, trail running's next on the card. So uh, we're yeah. going to be up there running around the lakes and see see what we do with that. Once we're back from injury, obviously. So Ben, your mate Ben says that's some lovely shoes. He's obviously after borrowing them off you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, night te- next percent tempo. Uh, to, to be honest, Brown. if the tempo next percent works for you, it's a fantastic shoe. Yeah. I, I managed to get mine for 20, 20 25 percent off with the birthday discount on Nike. Yep. I, I lied and said it was my birthday when it wasn't. Where's my code? It's my birthday. Yeah, no, what you do is, is you sign up to the app. Yep. Then Insider's tips. You can't, you can't put it the same month. You have to put it the next month, and then you get a discount code. Because most of the discount codes don't work on their top-end products. Yeah, yeah. And you get the code, and you can use it on that. And it wasn't my birthday. I'm, I'm not born in, I'm born in August, not December. Fair enough. Uh, ben says, zero AirPod issues, just splits behind the AirPods. Yeah, a lot of people have had the split. So basically the shoe, so, so we got the AirPods. So a lot of people, that again, it's split just here. Yep. Uh, um, I've only worn them, let's say, three times. So they're, they're like a special shoe to me now. I only wear them when I know I'm in business. Yeah, well, so you know you're going for it. Yeah. yeah. Mark says he's got the uh, tempos. This seems to be a popular shoe. I've noticed that quite a few people have been uh, picking this up. Yeah, well it's, well, it's a legal shoe as well, isn't it? If you're an elite runner, you can't wear it. Can you not? Is it no. the uh, stack height too much? Yeah, the stack height, right. So the way Nike work is that they base it on um, on the shoe, the sample shoe. So the sample yeah. shoe might be a size 8, size 9. I can't remember. Probably a size 9. So on a size 9, this area here, I'm trying to get my finger right to the camera, is 42 millimetres. So it's 2 millimetres too much. But the thing is with Nike, is people complain about the weight, is that the bigger the shoe, the bigger the drop. So yeah. mine's 46 on mine. Right. So this is the is too, it yeah? Is it a 40 mil drop on any shoe or is it a 40 mil drop based on a specific size? On a, it's on their sample size. Everything's based on the sample size. So if you look at the Alpha Fly, that's yep. not a band shoe because that's at 38. But yep. when you get to a size eleven, it's fifty on the heel. So it's actually worse than my tempo, but that's not banned then. Because of that sample size. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so I, can, I can wear it as a non-elite runner, but if I was yep. elite runner, I couldn't wear them. Right. So that first, <clears throat> sorry, the first pen off at the race, can't wear them, but everyone behind them can type thing. Yeah. So, yeah, Ben says you were born in 19, uh, sorry, 1851. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, well, yeah I'm a time traveller. Thought so. Um, ben Browning also says great deal. Uh, he's going to try that tomorrow. Going to yeah. see if have several birthdays. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, you, obviously, you can only do it once on the actual app, but you need to do it um, not the not the month you're in. It needs to be the following month. Yeah. So just wait a week, a day or two, and then yeah. yeah you and it's the only discount that's a, um, that you can put on any shoe rather than actual sale shoe. Right. right. So uh, the only other thing we were going to talk about was uh, funny running stories. Have you got any? Well, being knocked over by a kid on a uh, scooter and breaking my arm—that was quite funny. Well, it wasn't funny at the time, but I can laugh about it now. Um, Funny running stories, um, probably two stories that come from the Great North Run a couple of years ago, last time we were able to run it. And uh, my mate Mark, who is on here, will know this and he's probably laughing already. We got there at seven o'clock in the morning, parked up at the finish, and we're walking over to get the bus to the start. I decided that I needed to use the porter toilet, as you do. Yeah. So I climb, go in there, start to use the toilet. Next thing I know, it's like being on a train. This porter toilet is rocking from backwards and forwards and being shook all over the place. And Mark is shouting um, freedom and all this malarkey outside. And then all of a sudden you hear this voice from a security guy shouting at him and Mark running off. <laughs> kids, kids. Yeah, I, I've got quite a few actually from my, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the, of the first one off the top of so, um, so, so you made, back in the day when we had steeplechase, yeah. and, um, kids, everyone was allowed on the track, weren't they? on steeplechase years and years ago. So they would yeah, all yeah. hang around that, that, the water jump. 
And yeah. every time you went in, everyone cheered. And it was kind of, you know, it was an occasion. It was the last, one of the last events. And I think I was coming round, getting ready to hit me with my left foot so I can land on my strongest right foot. As I went to go up the barrier, someone cut me up, head first into the water jump, got up, everyone cheering, give it a nice little little bow, and then carried on running. Um, another story, a uh, district uh, race, me and a guy called Mark Blower. I think we were both 16. I was uh, a 407, 800, uh, 407, 1500 meter runner. And we both had similar times, never met. And it was the head to head that everyone was waiting for. So I knew I had a sprint finish. So I sat on his back all the way around until about 200 to go, started drifting out on his shoulder, going ready to go past him. Then the Jack Russell runs out and knocks him over. <laughs> I just cruised, my, cruised down the, the straight. Um, cross country. You know, you've seen the, um, um, this cartoon sketches with the big hole in the puddle. Yeah. That someone's almost like they've dug a puddle, I dug, dug a puddle, dug a hole, and then filled it with water. That happened to me on a cross country. Right. I literally put my foot in this puddle and it come up to my waist. Took you two hours to get out. It took me, I got spikes all over the place. People just trod on me left, right, and centre. Oh, who said this was a safe, easy sport? I know. Uh, English schools lost my spike within 100 yards coming out of the pen. So I had to run the whole race with this with one shoe. Brilliant. But that'd be like running in the plimsolls in PE, so you'll be all right doing that. Nothing wrong with barefoot running. Um, the, the most brutal story, out running with my dad when I was a teenager, running through the woods, uh, went off the path and just went to go on the golf course. My dad ran into some barbed wire <laughs> on his thighs, end up having to pull him out. <laughs> it was <insane. laughs> And when he got you old, don't you ever do that again. Oh, it was horrendous. You know, it was rusty old barbed wire. You know, he's like, that's oh, fine. Just give it a lick. Then <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get a tetanus. Yeah. So there's, my, there's a couple of my running stories. Fair enough. Um, what's, have you ever seen anything like this? No. But you, yeah. you said heel strikers. How does that work for you? Well, this is supposed to stop your heel striking. That's the whole idea behind it. It's, uh, uh, it's a shoe out of Spain, the FBR. Yeah. And the whole idea behind it was to try and train you out of being a heel striker. I can never hold it to the right place in the camera here. So the heel's actually being cut out. So when your foot's coming down, yeah. you can't. there's nowhere for it to go, so you have to land on your forefoot. So how's forefront. it working for you? I wore it once for the video. Yeah. And a bit of running with that. And uh, then it's just been put in the cupboard, and I'll get to it next time. And so I'm still waiting. So I will be giving it a go. It looks like you could do an horrendous injury if you just put one foot wrong, you've overstrided, you come off a curb somewhere and you t you land on that back. Oh, my God, you're going to pull, it, pull a Nothing, car yeah. muscle. <laughs> Look at it. It's horrendous. It's no, a nice-looking nice shoe. <laughs> it's lovely. It's orange. Right. The just tell um, what it looks like. It looks like the shoes you get out when you go bowling. Yeah, it does look like a bowling shoe. It does. It does. Uh, but the whole the thing about it is it's the same as when you're going to barefoot running. If you're going to a minimal, minimalistic shoe, you can't just change into it. You've got to train into the shoe before you can actually use it properly. So there's loads of drills that you need to do with before you can actually go out and do some proper running in it. But no, I will I will attempt it being that hill striker and see what it does. So uh, Do you have to like train so you're not embarrassed when you're out running in it? Listen, I wear fluorescent green calf socks and all sorts i don't care what people think about me so no i, I don't care <laughs> right if i cared if i cared would i have some sl20s in that color no no that's a nice looking shoe though the other one's just kind of wrong yeah, i know what you mean uh well i've got this in my hand sports direct 39.99 wow for sl20s not green because they're still under a pound i think it's a um, ready salmon color that they've got down for 39.99 at the moment and last time i looked there was a full range of um colors available cool so, so, so what bargain shoes have you picked up during uh, the kind of lockdown <sighs> she's not let me she's not letting you well, that's it. That's the time of year we're in now, isn't it? All the companies have got the new shoes coming out, so all the last year's models are being are being uh, are being reduced. Did so you not get, did you not get for Christmas a new pair? Did you not get what? Get get any shoes for Christmas? No, I was banned from it. 
Right, so, so the ones I got, I took advantage of the Nike when they had a sale. So I picked up three pairs of Pegasus 37s. So I've got a um, this colorway, a black yeah. colorway, and no, two black colorways. I got these for £51 each delivered. I was going to say I sold them down for about £50. That's, that's not a bad price. But is the 37 any good? Because it's one of those it's shoes that's getting a lot of mixed reviews. Shoe. So for me, it works. Um, if you're heel striker, forget it. You've got to put at least 25 to 30 miles in it before it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because the re React foam is just so dense that it's actually quite a hard ride. So it's a shoe you've got to give a you know a chance. I saw in the comments, which is which I'd always do, is if you're gonna buy Nike at the moment, because there's such my much shoes, buy them from Nike. 60 day return policy at the moment. Yeah, that's really good. Send Nike them, send them back. Another shoe, Wild Horse Sixes. Forty-eight pound delivered in their sale. That's the latest version as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a World of Six in the blue. Fantastic shoe. As I say, uh, it's got doesn't even pick up mud. It says it's got some sort of anti pick up mud technology. I don't know what it is. No rubbish, but that fantastic. Uh, before, then, you go uh, to next, before you go to the next shoe, yeah. Vicky, I'm buying some new shoes. <laughs> no, she said okay. Um, Christmas got myself the uh, React Infinity Run. Yeah. Uh, the version one uh this shoe when i first wore it was so squishy that i thought i don't know if i'm gonna like this shoe but now that i've i've used it fantastic shoe for that gentle easy runs someone's people are getting like 1500 miles with this shoe that's all right um a lot of people are having issues with hill slip and lockdown to be honest i think i've got a foot that you know works well um if if you want to as I say, they're the bargains I picked up. eBay is also a good place to mm -hmm. pick up shoes. You can pick up new ones without lids on uh, that people get from America. So I got these. These are the uh, Zoomfly SPs, version one. So um, nylon plate, uh, 230 grams in a size 11, very light shoe, nothing to it. You know, this is, this is on the verge of, uh, what, fake flight, 4%. This is the one before. Got this for 45 quid new bargain so i've actually got two pairs of these and three pairs of zoom fly ones they're all they're all pretty much at the end of the end of their life but um the cheapest shoe i got which i don't wear anymore is the uh fuel cell rebel i got this off of pro direct running for 26 quid wow and this is what well, this was the top of the range uh new balance but unfortunately 26 miles in it can't wear any more because it hurts my achilles so i only wear nikes now fair enough i was going to say i've not been out buying like you have there obviously but the last bargain i bought was the uh symmetros from reebok yeah we need to give reebok more love before they disappear because adidas are trying to sell them but this shoe is just so nice on my foot lockdown is fantastic and um, the cushioning I did a marathon in it. I did 26 miles in it, and my legs weren't battered. It's that nice. No carbon plates. It's just an everyday runner. Picked it up for £50. Brilliant shoe. Probably done about 220 miles in it now, and only bought it, what, October time? Yeah. The only problem I found that wearing the um, – or using shoes with the airbag is kind of sport me now because any – you know, the airbag's here. So any shoe that I wear that hasn't got the airbag in, they don't feel that comfortable. Because right. that, that really saves your legs, that airbag. Because, you know, you know when you can feel the ground? Yeah. You know, through the shoe. You can't feel it at all on that. I know I've got Nike. Uh, I've got Nike next percent and I've run then in the marathon. And, again, you, you're not getting that beaten up feeling the next day. I, I don't know if it actually helps you run faster, but it actually it really does help the recovery. You don't feel as beat up. Well, the Pegasus 37s, a lot of people have said they're heavier. Uh, they don't feel they're running quick. But then they've got back. They've looked at the times. And I run just as quick wearing those shoes as wearing my Zoom flies with the carbon plating. And my legs weren't battered. Because, you know, I think as a master's runner, the, the more minimal you go, the more your legs are going to take to recover. So yeah. for me, it's all about cushioning. And running slow. Slow and, and easy. So, so it's either slow and easy or really fast. It's, it's just one of the two. <laughs> Running slow when you get to you get to go to the fast the fast bit. Um, I must admit, I've I've gone over to Adidas quite a lot this year. Yeah. Um, because that light strike 
seems to work better for me than um, the Zoom X that I've in the in the um, the Nike. I don't know why it just feels a nicer shoe for me, and it feels nicer when I'm running. But it's the Boston Ten, I think, which is what they've got coming out this year, yeah. which is going to have the carbon plating, which is going to be their marathon shoe. That's the one that really intrigues me for this coming year. Yeah, I think it's important that if you find a brand that you like, stick with it. Because the problem that people do, they slate all these other trains. You know, if you're a Nike fan and then you go over to Adidas and you wear it and you say, oh, it's hurt my ankle, it's hurt my feet. It's because you've changed brand. You know, there are different style of shoe, different support. So if you find a shoe that works, stick to that brand. You know, we don't have to have a, a Nike shoe, a Reebok shoe, an Adidas shoe. Why don't you just stick to one? Yeah, it's like uh, if, if you look at the uh, marathons and half marathons that were actually run last year and look at the uh, the winners and what they were wearing, it was all next percents and adios pros. So Adidas have actually upped their game and, and catching Nike up. Uh, uh, yeah, well, they actually, uh, the Alpha Flies weren't even warm, were they? No, no one's been wearing the Alpha Flies. Um, it was Bele Berkeley was mentioned why, because they weren't, they didn't get them early enough to train in them. And when yeah, they were well, going out with them, because they weren't getting the training done, they were causing injuries. Yeah, well, the Tempo Next is supposed to be a training partner for that shoe, which you know, yeah. I think it's the shoe in its own right. You know, it, to be honest, if I was to go for a half marathon race, I'd probably wear that shoe. Yeah. You know, uh, people, you know, yes, it's 320 grams, but does it really make that much difference? I don't think it does. You, you feel the weight when you put it on, but once you're out and running, the, the, I don't think you actually feel the shoe. Well, the only thing you feel is the wind through your toes. Well, you do on the fly nets, yeah. Oh, my God. You, you can't wear them in the winter. You, I was doing that with numb toes. So all my running at the moment is just in my 37s because they are so cold. So, um, so, so what's the worst shoe you've ever got? Uh, probably the worst shoe, and, and it's because I bought it to try it, was from – um, decathlon i've yeah. got the kalanji 14.99 shoe for, for running <laughs> right, just go and watch the video there's a video on my channel about it it was it was all right for running but it, it wasn't the most cushioned shoe you'll ever come across it's supposed to be cushioned but it wasn't you probably need an insole to actually make it anything half yeah. decent but it's probably the worst shoe i've bought for running but i use it as the everyday casual wear shoe and it's brilliant for that yeah but yeah. well, mine was when I first started running. You know, you kind of have that kind of vision of what you want to look like. So I was thinking all black outfit. So I went to a Sports Direct and I thought to myself, I want to get a black shoe. And when you start running, you're very price driven. You know, mm -hmm. you, you want the bargain shoe. So I spent £35 on a pair of Caramel runs. And to be honest, they were absolutely shocking. <laughs> they were the worst shoe. And, and, after that, I did the best thing you can do. Go to a sports shop, get your gait tested, get on a treadmill. They sell you a new balance that, that ruin your Achilles. And then you buy Nikes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great circle of life thing. I think you hit it on the head. Everybody goes out to Sports Direct. Buy the one that looks the best, one that looks the cheapest. Get that. Yeah. Go to a running shop. Our local running shop, It's uh, everyone comes out with Brooks. So it must really just yeah. be the deal they have. And then, as you say, once you've done that, you move on to the Nikes. Yeah, because the first time I tried on uh, Nikes is when I was in America. Mm -hmm. So I picked up the 35 Turbos, and the Pegasus 35 Turbos are known as probably probably one of the best shoes that Nikes put out. We'll do everything. We'll run a – you can run a 515 mile or you can run an eight-minute mile. It will do everything. You get 600 miles at the shoe, just like a running slipper. And as soon as I tried that on, I was like, Wow. And I've never looked back. You know, my Achilles issues went away. And now, you know, I'm, I've am i probably got about 15 pairs of New Balance that have probably, you know, got a handful of miles in that I just wear as casual shoes now. I, I sign them and get them on eBay. Put them on as a... I would, but the problem is they're all size 12. <laughs> so it's quite yeah. limited to a flip, you know, unless a clown's buying them. Well, everyone, everyone's buying size 10 because I can never find the ones I want. They're, all, they're always disappearing quick. Yeah. No, you know, I've got flipper feet. Right. Anyway, Michael's put up an interesting question there. He's taken us off the shoes. Uh, I'll just comment that uh, Ben said, are the FBRs not the worst shoe I bought? No, because I've not tried them properly yet. But Michael's asked that question. What running shorts for long training days? I must admit, the shorts myself, I've not really looked into in too much detail. Uh, I just got some off Amazon for... Yeah, no, to be, to be honest, shorts, I, I think don't go any shorter than five inches. Mm -hmm. Don't run with the three-inch ones. They are they're horrendous, aren't they? 
they're absolutely horrendous. You know, when I mean, you, you, you're going to be showing more than than your legs. So let's say uh, good evening. Let's say good evening to Ben Parks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I would say don't go for seven inch. Go for a five. Um, and to be honest, I wear car I wear caramel ones. To be honest, they're fine as long as they've got a zip pocket to put a key in or, or yeah. you know, fit your GoPro in. Um, shorts, I don't think are that, are that important. You know, they're reasonably comfortable. In the winter, I wear leggings with shorts over the top because I think that people who go out with just leggings on... Um, it doesn't look right at all. They don't look right. It, obviously, it depends how well endowed you are. But, you know, if, if, you're, not, if you're not well endowed, then it's fine, isn't it? Well, nobody is well endowed in the winter, are they? Because it's too cold. But True. <laughs> um, the thing is, I, I don't wear tights in winter because I, I wear knee supports and the, the calf socks, so there's no yeah. room for any tights because my legs are covered. They're covered all the way during the summer as well, just to, just that support for my knees. Because being a middle-aged runner, it's my knees that are, are my weak point. Yeah. So, so have you tried working on your thighs? No, I've just been out. I've told you this. I just go out and run. So this, yeah, these are the whole things that I've sat and researched whilst I've been incapacitated and, and moving forward, that's where we're going. We're going to be looking at the, the technique, my style, and targeting the, the upper body strength and yeah. all these other muscle groups. So we're going to be taking it a lot more seriously than I did previously. Yes, yeah, so, so it's slow down, work on your weak points, and it's kind of, you know, it's job done. Yeah. Soft lads with shorts, no leggings. There's, there's no way, to be honest, anything under... Six, six, seven degrees, and I'm wearing leggings. Oh, no, you can't be. As, as I said to you off air in the green room earlier on, when I went down to the post office today, three people passed me, two of them in shorts with no hats. I don't know how they can do it when the wind chill factor is minus three, and then you're running through that, so it's going to be even colder, and yeah. there's nothing on the legs, and there's nothing on the head. They're, they're, they're looking to get a cold, at least. Yeah, no, I was wrapped up. I had three tops on, two pairs of gloves, a woolly hat, Leggings, shorts, socks, shoes, and a snood. It's so got to be done. I was snug as a bug. Yeah, your mate says you can't beat a three-inch short. <sighs> what are the comments have we got? Uh, have you seen the Kafosi video on the uh, Mizuno two shorts? Oh my god! No, I, I did see. I did hear Kafosi mention something about it in his last video, so I might have to go back in there. Uh, I suppose it would take a bit longer, wouldn't it? It would. Um, so, um, so, so do you think that um, races are going to come back this year? And how do you reckon they're going to come back? Fingers crossed. I can't see anything happening this side of the summer. Um, if anything comes back, it is going to be September onwards. But it's not going to be any way, shape or form how it used to be. We're not. I can't see how we can have... Now, the likes of London, 50,000 people in a park all starting at the same time. It just can't happen but i don't know how they, how they can do it even if you did it in five ways of ten thousand people it's still too many people close together at the start of a race because because that, that was my concern if i got into london which was a big if and i have put it forward for a charity place um but i don't think it's going to happen to be honest this year um you know they were talking as you say doing it in waves doing it staggered how long would that take what, by the time someone finished the finish line, what was going to be that nine o'clock at night? Well, but this is the thing before when they're the closing the roads and it was shown in the 2019, wasn't it, that the cleanup crew were on the heels of the slowest runners who were running seven and a half hours. Yeah. So if, if you've got your last wave leaving at two o'clock in the afternoon, as you say, seven and a half hours, you're half nine, ten o'clock, aren't you? So I, yeah. I just can't see it. But I, also I can't see with the vaccine, you know, if, say, for instance, that I get done in June, then... I'm not going to have my next vaccine for three months after that. So I'm probably not going to be vaccinated at the earliest, fully vaccinated in September. And so I, I can't see it happen. To be honest, I, I, in my mind, I've written off last year and I've written off this year. Um, yeah. I'm just continued training, building my base. Um, and if, if you want to continue running and, and, and being motivated, just get yourself a YouTube channel. Yeah, that's, that's always good. That's what you do. Simple as that. Well, I like marathons. I've really grown to enjoy the marathon distance. Uh, I love doing it. And my ultimate goal and the reason I started my YouTube channel in the first place was to uh, have you, you, and everybody else as my accountability partners as I tried to try and get a marathon time of 3.20 so I could qualify for Boston. So that's the way I started it. But it's grown. It's more 
I like talking about running. I like running. So the marathon itself isn't the, the my impetus anymore. I go out to run because I like it. Yeah. And I, you see too often that people say, I'm running for, I've got London, I'm running London, I'm running London. It's cancelled. Oh, I'm not running anymore. And they just quit. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, mine was, you know, as, as you know, I used to run as a teenager. Mine was like midlife crisis, you know, got to 42 and thought, what did I do? You know, I was an all right runner back then. Why did I give up? You know, my life could have been so different. Um, for me, it's it, it's about enjoying it, following my journey. You know, my, mine's a five-year plan. The, the mm. ideal goal is that I run for England as a master's runner. That's the yeah. ideal goal. But that realistically isn't going to happen until I'm probably 50, 55. Um, and, and a few of my club uh, do run for England as masters runners, so it is achievable. You know, it might only happen till I'm 60, 70, but it's a well, goal. I know it could definitely happen because we've got a runner in our group, um, uh, 64 now, uh, Paul. And the, the only thing we can aspire to is watching him disappear in the distance. You know, he's 64 yeah. and he leaves even the young lads for standing. So that's the goal is to right, try and finish not too far behind him, to be honest. Yeah, but, well, you know. We've got someone called Bob. He's 69 and he runs a 1735k, a 3604 10k. And he's going to be 70 this year. Brilliant. I had him as my pacer for my 10k. <laughs> <laughs> he's nearly 70. <laughs> so it, it just puts it into perspective. You know, what, it does. what, what Age is, is just a number? Yeah. Age is just a number when it comes to running. But no, yeah. age is phenomenal. You know, to someone to look up to, to inspire to, um, and but the, unfortunately, you know, he keeps on getting injured. Then he comes back, and then he keeps on getting injured. But I suppose that's just an age thing, you know. Going to come to school, afraid. I was going to say I also fell into the trap. I stopped. I left school and stopped running, and then I didn't pick it up again until I was fifty-one. And now I am really kicking myself. Why yeah. did I waste all that time sat watching TV videos from blockbusters? Why not go out there? That is one of my biggest regrets, not continuing running, because yeah. I was good at it back then, and I'm mediocre now, so really missing it. Should have done it. So, so you sent me uh, an email earlier about tracks, about tracks reopening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, just um, this comment from Mark there before we get on to that. Uh, Mark look, doesn't want them to cancel because he's got London, New York, uh, and I think he's deferred Chicago till next year, but no. So, Aren't Fingers all crossed, it's on for you, Mark. Aren't all the majors supposed to be within six weeks about each other? Forty-two days from the first one to the last one. <laughs> they worked out that one, didn't they? Well, um, it's. I think it's Berlin. Yeah. Fly out to Tokyo. Back to London. Week after London, it's Chicago. The day after Chicago, it's Boston, and then it's New York a week after that. It's, or something like that. It haven't worked out well, but at the end of the day, everyone's working out on the the uh, pandemic, aren't they? Yeah. So it's fixture congestion, as a certain football manager used to say. So there's, there's plenty coming up. Right. Yeah. Uh, I sent you an email earlier on because I came across a news report that um, there is a petition going to the government to say, let's open the sports tracks. Right. You know? Because uh, under the current regulations, a coach can still coach. They can still do their business as long as it's on a one-to-one -one basis. So why can't we be using the running tracks? They're outside. They're not inside. It's not enclosed. It's it's easier to control the number of people going on the running track. So why, why can't we be out using those facilities? Because let's face it, the parks are still open for the kids. The kids can still go on the parks. There's skate parks within inside our parks that the kids can still use. So... It's, it's one of those things. Why can we not get onto our sports tracks and carry on with the business of training? Because we, we know the health and the mental health benefits from that. Yeah. Well, well obviously, we need, the problem we most of them have is they're attached to a sports centre, aren't they? Uh, you can have somebody sat in a van opening the gate. Yeah. Well, well, well when the first lockdown come, um, I'm part of the endurance group, which basically means the older runners. I mean, it's just a polite way of calling this, you know, the, the older one is called endurance. So when the first lockdown came, when we were allowed to meet with six other people. Yep. So um, our track got cancelled, the endurance group. It was just the youngsters, which, you know, fair enough, they're youngsters. But then I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute, I'm getting older every day, you know, why shouldn't I be allowed? So, so the training was on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Um 
And so then a year later, I got contacted about setting up a session for a Wednesday. So I was personally was going to be taking the session from a club. There would be six of us that obviously I would liaise with and we would get back to the track. And then the next day, the, the lockdown came. So the, obviously that was, you know, that's the end of that. Yeah. But but yeah. I, 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 I'll be happy to go back and run with six people, you know, yeah. if it's just us there because we have sole use of the track on certain days because mm -hmm. our, our track was destroyed on the basis that this new track that we were going to move, you know, new sports centre, that we would have sole use of it on certain days at certain times. So it would work, you know, if we're all in each different lanes or we're working on a staggered start, you know, and we're, we're all responsible. One, if, you know, if I've got COVID and your the symptoms are bad, then I wouldn't be able to run in the first place. Yep. And so, you know, we're all at an age where we can be sensible. We're not going to be stupid. We're not going to be hugging each other like we see some YouTubers doing at the end of races. Um, um, so, so I think, it, yes, it, it should come back. But it will have to fall within the regulations of maybe six or, or whatever the number is going to be. I know uh, I was at the uh, Run Leaders Development Workshop last night, which was a Zoom meeting, 180 run leaders from around the country. And... Again, it was covering pretty much what was covered the week before, which was about COVID regulations. But English athletics themselves are working towards, and fingers crossed that we can get back to at least that six bubble once we get back to the 8th of March when uh, allegedly yeah. the schools will be going back. Yeah, it, it is a difficult one. For me, you know, I love the track. That's where my kind of passion is. It takes me back to when I was a kid, teenager. So I love track, cross country. But I think the main... The main thing that's missing that most of us running, you know, are yearning for is that community. You know, we're fortunate that we run a YouTube channel. I can interact with the likes of you. I can interact with people on a regular basis, you know, chatting away. But running with someone else, you can't beat it. You know, you'll be out on a run. If I'm running on my own, I could be running 30 seconds a mile, 15 seconds a mile quicker because I've got someone next to me because I'm chatting. I'm not concentrating on the pace. And... I met up with someone on a run. He's he's in his 70s. I was on an eight-miler. Saw him. We had a little chat. He was going out for another five miles. I joined him, and he texted me to say that he didn't realise how much he was actually missing it. Well, I know from my personal view, I'm missing the competitiveness. I can go out, and I can run a virtual, and I can run it fast, and I feel like I'm doing well. But I know that if it was a proper race environment where you can see that person in front of you and you can run them yeah. down and you can get past them i'm missing that so i know in that environment i can run quicker and that's what i'm missing yeah well, well every run that you go and do a time roll realistically you're just doing a threshold run yeah because races you know if, if you was to go on a race say for instance i'm going out and i'm looking to run a part run um you know, if I do it on my own, I'm probably going to be ticking around just over 18 minutes. If I'm doing it with other people, I'm probably be looking at 17.30. So, you know, there is that difference, that extra kind of where you dig deeper, you push yourself to that limit, rather than you're doing it on your own, who are you running with? You know, yes, we have someone to, to be accountable for as YouTubers, and that is our drive. Yep. But to the average runner who's just going out and, you know, the 5k you get to the middle that's the toughest part you really struggle you just think oh well, it's just me i might as well just give up you know it, that's that's that, that's how it becomes yeah the social side of it again on the meeting last night they're saying this the smaller running groups the smaller clubs seem to be doing okay and they're gaining extra members and the facebook and the whatsapp groups are really fresh and continuously yeah. moving. The same with our group in Blackpool. The, the Facebook page is continually, there's always something happening, there's always somebody talking, there's, people are always buddying up, getting out there and doing the runs. But on the bigger clubs, they seem to be the ones that are stalling and, and, and flagging because they're just too big and they're not adapting to deliver a, a, a run or a product to, to the members. So yeah. the smaller well, groups are doing better. Well, we was quite fortunate that they covered our, uh, our athletics cost last year um you, because you know there's two ways to pay isn't there you either pay to the athletics affiliation or you pay an additional amount on top of that so then you can go to the track and have access to the coaches or you can do a pay as you go so, so this year they just covered that fee they had enough money in the bank and yeah. just said no. 
because because from their point of view they want to keep hold of their members <laughs> you know and and how many people have given up running i you know too many too many you know and, and that's the impetus so the way I look at it is I'm going to continue my training and then when part runs come back, you know, I'll be ahead of the pack, so to speak. Yeah. Well, right. Uh, I'm just looking at the time. We've been, we've been prattling on for an hour already. So um, I think we should quickly just go through some of the comments here and then that uh, I'll call it a day. So uh, M Michael was asking, um, what age would you like to run to? So go on, Chris. What age would you like to run to? Um, as long as I can, really. I think that's the only way, you know, we like to run. So you just want to run until you can't run no more. Right. A few more questions. Here's one from Ben. Has Brexit haulage issues affected supply in retail or online run shop? I haven't noticed any problems unless you're in Northern Ireland. Well, I think at the moment you're probably going to be able to pick up some bargains because of Brexit, because of COVID. You know, there's probably going to be a lot of stock sitting there, you know, get out of date. Because my view is, yes, I've picked up some new issues, but just wait six months. You know, a new shoe comes out, wait six months, and you get it at a bargain price. This is true. Oh, the door, though. Yeah, one of the cats. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was their wife telling me I could spend some money on shoes. No, but not the sort. Right. Um, social run groups for middle-aged to older runners in person and virtual. Yeah, well, I think we covered that. Or is he having a go at us? No, no, I don't think they're having a go. Right, fair enough. Um, let's go through the last few. Yes, I think most of the group, I think most of the groups have their own groups on Strava these days, don't they? Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd like to try some Swift running, but as I said in the live I did last week, I just can't get hold of any of the pods. Can't get old run pods. Uh, 95. 95. Wow. It's brilliant. Yeah, Mark says we're all long in competitive running. I think that's true to say. We all want it coming back in some way. Yeah, Ben wants to get back on the track. Yeah, you can't beat those 1K repeats on the track. Well, this is, I like track running because I'm lazy and it's all marked out for me, so I know exactly where I'm going. So I, I do like To be honest, with the track, though, it comes at great gains, but at a high cost. Yeah. I've been a year now injury-free because I haven't been to the track. Every time I went to the track, I would pick up a niggle here and there. So, yeah, track running's great, but unfortunately, as you get older, you lose your, your kind of top end. Yeah. But I all the injuries. Um, well, when I was, I was trying to think, so when I was 16, I was a 159, 800 meter runner, mm -hmm. uh, 407 for, uh, 1500. I ran a 10 miles in 59 when I was 16 and then gave up. So, um, my goals at the moment, uh, would probably be down to get to low 17s on the 10k, uh, 36 odd minutes for the no no for, no sorry for the 5k 36 minutes for the 10k um and half marathon probably and to get low to 120s yeah. uh, and probably go for a 250 255 marathon fantastic so um hoping to do that uh, let's say the, the furthest i've ever run is 18 miles so yeah you've got to do it in london weaving around everybody uh, um, I, I, I i'm quite fortunate uh, that, I come from good stock. My sister was the second fastest 800 meter in runner in the country at 13. She used to beat Paula Radcliffe. My brother used to play for Watford under 18s football. And I was the Southern Counties cross country champion. So we come from good stock. I'm sorry, you're breaking up now, Chris. I can't hear you. With... Yeah. So uh... <laughs> I'm just trying to think how that compares to what my goals are. As I say, I've done the sub 25K. So I'm just knocking some time off that. Need to get sub 40 on the 10K. I'm yeah. at 131 on the half marathon, so I want to get below that 130 on that. And then, as I say, the ultimate goal for me is to get the uh, qualifying time for a 50, well, it'll be for a 54-year-old at Boston, which is three hours 20. So that's what I'm aiming for. Th th those are my goals, and I'm yeah. sticking to them. Well, well the, the park run, as I say, 
concentrate on your aerobic zone. Yeah. Uh, that's ninety percent. Um, last two thousand nineteen was the first May two thousand nineteen was the first time I went under twenty minutes for five k, and then a year later I went under eighteen minutes, and that was all from doing eighty twenty training, low intensity, and up my mileage to to fifty mile weeks. Fantastic. Right. I think we should leave it there or else we'll be here all night because the questions keep coming in. Um, before you disappear, Chris, how can people find you? You can find me. Uh, there we go. We're going to point to it. That running guy. Yep. Or, yeah. You're or, showing off now that you can do that and I can't. Uh, um, so I've got a YouTube channel. Um, and so just giving you, aiming towards kind of vet tips on how I've stayed injury free, goes into 80 20 training. Um, bit of math training, do running time trials. I, I I just like to be honest, cut out the BS. I think there's a lot of YouTubers out there that don't tell it the way it is. Um, you know, and I, I do my weekly training vlogs, and I just try and be honest. You know, running is does have its ups and downs, and I, I will share that with you. You know, I'm not looking to pretend it's like it's not. What I what I do is what I say. So come and check out my channel. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't, still subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still worth subscribing, even if you don't like it, because you will pick up something along the way, uh, which is true of uh, most of the channels out there. So, Chris, thank you very much indeed for being here tonight. Really do appreciate right, it. We're gonna, thanks for having me we're on. Gonna, we're going to have to do this again at some point in the future. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so I've been, they say I'm Ben Parks' dad. Uh, no, you're younger than me, so God knows what that makes me. So, uh, yeah, well, I, I've tried to be more like Ben Parks and smile all the time, but I just can't do it. <laughs> it's just so difficult to be that upbeat all the time and every video, it's kind of... Is it is it just for the video or is he that type of person? I don't know. I don't think anyone can be, can they? Well, I can't take it serious when he takes his hat off and his hair just goes... Foof. Yeah, yeah, no, it's... But there we go, I'll wear a cap most of the time. That's because my hair's receding. I, I think that's the problem that comes with our being middle-aged, I think. But the other thing about running hats is this band here really yeah. does stop the sweat getting in the eye, so I do like that. I, I must admit, Ben Parks' cap is fantastic for running. Yes. I don't know if I've oh, put mine. Mine's more for show. You know, it's, it's a peak cap. It does work. You can clean it. It's more for show at the end of the day. Um, you know, his are more expensive. They do the job. And, you know, they've got that kind of mesh bit at the back that kind of... Yeah. yeah what area it is. And they clean up really well. Cool. So uh, if you're going to treat yourself, treat yourself to a Ben Parks cap. After they bought one from you. In fact, buy them both. Um, Get the Ben Parks one for you and buy what the, uh, running, that running guy one for the wife. That's what the way forward. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Right. So thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Ben, Ben, Mark, Andy, Kim, uh, Michael, loads of you have been there tonight. Really do appreciate you turning up. It's been, it's been, a, it's been a good night. I've enjoyed it. No, so thank always, you very much. It's always good to have a chat, isn't it? Um, yeah. Especially with someone else, because it's kind of, you know, that's just what we want to talk about. Just running, you know, go off piste, if that's what you say. Yeah, um, go off piste and just talk about what people want to hear. Talk about yeah, normal. Well, well. So, yeah, it, I know you started this, you started a movement, didn't you, try, a few months ago, trying to get all the smaller channels together and trying to build a whole running community. How's that yeah. going from your end? Um, when I started, um, uh, what was it? Hashtag pack forward. So I promoted 50 running YouTube channels this year, did uh, another 50, uh, on a post that I did on a shorts video. Um, I, th I think that we kind of, you know, as we all grow, we should support the smaller people. So, you know, my view was that, you know, I got to X amount of subscribers. So I will use my channel to promote smaller channels. <laughs> yeah, um, because, you know, it is a win-win because, yeah. You know, one, you're going to find more channels, you can get better content. And, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking, oh, if I recommend someone else, I'm going to lose a subscriber. Because, you know, it's, it's some of the bigger channels, you know, they don't give people shout outs. You know, why, why not? No. Well, it's, it's, every, everyone starts at zero. Exactly. You know, it's like, like uh, you started at zero. Yeah. You know, whether you've got one subscriber, whether you've got 50,000 subscribers, we all started. We, did, you know, we, didn't, we weren't gifted it. No, no, you've got to do the hard work you've got to put in there. No, um, and it, and it's tough, so, you know, to, to people who watch these videos, give thumbs up, give likes, comment, because it helps promote the channels. 
you know, there's a lot of work that goes into these, a lot of time, you know, editing, coming up right. with video ideas. It's not as easy as everyone thinks it is. Well, a 10 minute running video takes what? F an hour to do the run. Another yeah. 20 minutes to go back and do the B roll from the run. Yeah, and the then fly you sit yeah, down and. It could take you, you know, 20 minutes to do that for a, a minute clip. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of work. No, it, it, it is good, you know, and, and, and some people think, oh, I don't want to share all my tips and stuff, you know, or I don't want to share my training plans. Well, why not? Why? Why? Everyone's well, different. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I think just be honest. D don't BS anyone. Um, if you've got a YouTube channel, just have a why. Why yeah. are they subscribing to you? Why are they watching you? Why are they going to come back? If you couldn't have that, have a reason, you know, you've got a journey, then you will pick up subscribers. Simple as that. Anyway, I'm waffling again now. Yeah, I don't mind because, as I say, we're two, two middle-aged runners just talking about running, which is what it's all about. Right, we're going to go now. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. Really do appreciate it. Hope to see you all again soon. The way I normally finish off my videos is let's get running. Yeah. Have you, have you got any catchphrases? Onwards and upwards. Fantastic. Everybody, thank you for watching tonight. We'll, we'll see you on that. Hold on. It's all, the Scotsman has come back. I come back for a free hat. Free hat. <laughs> That's the Scotsman in him. No problems. Right. Thank you for that, Mark. On that bombshell, as a certain car show would say, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you all again soon. Don't forget, subscribe, comment, share, tell 20,000 of your friends. Cheers. See you later.